So this is day in the life of the first thing in the morning. Um, the first thing in the morning is we prepare chop and then we put it on these uh, standing stands. Hi kitty! And the reason why we do that is because if we put it in their cage, we found that they like to fling all their food over the cages. So we're so scared that we're going to miss, you know, a piece and it could mold and really hurt them. So we use these stands for doing chop. And this is Happy's. And we put Happy in the lower um, lower uh, perch because we find that if we put her in one of the higher ones, she gets really nervous. But we're going to try to train her to use one of the higher ones because they're just... Uh, better for cleanup purposes because they have come with this white face and then that is uh, Bella's and that is um, lemons and they each have just one toy basically in their perch and that is just to make sure that um, they don't get too distracted but then they're still not bored and they can just kind of go back and forth between their chop and their perch I have just uncovered their sea cages and <laughs> Here's everybody just waking up, and now I'm gonna put them on their perch. And this so, is a basically them enjoying their little chop. <laughs> I really like giving chop to them first thing in the morning because then I know that they're gonna eat it and they're gonna be hungry, and then and they're gonna be enjoying, which is very important. Right, Lemon? Would you say you're enjoying your chop? Yeah, you little beautiful thing. And Bella over here, we always call her our chop delinquent because she never starts eating right away. And then she just kind of stands there chatting away. Look at her. She's uh, molting her baby tail feathers out and she's going to get her vibrant red tail feathers. Unfortunately, it's unbalanced right now. So she's just a little clumsy, but oh, maybe she'll start eating. Good, Bella! And she's not very used to eating chop. Um, when she was a baby, um, she was a rescue, and unfortunately she was fed um, a variety of things that weren't maybe perhaps too good for her. So the first thing we did was we focused on pellet training, and then once she started eating pellets, we introduced proper chop to her, and then so it's a little more difficult to, for her than uh, it is for the other two birds, but she says, so you can see it's doing really well. I'm proud of you, honey. I love you. <laughs> and what I like to do while they have their chop <laughs> is I like to go and basically inspect all the toys and make sure that there isn't anything that's been chewed so that it's sharp and take them off and then switch them to new toys, of course. And then I want to switch their water. So what we use is we use like a spout because then they can't uh, make soup is what we call it where if you use a water bowl they like to put all their foods in there and um, it's called soup and then it just is disgusting. Bella over here as you can see um, gets a water bowl in addition to her spout because she loves chewing her spout off and then getting it to fall from the cage and then she's without water. So we do this and as you can see she's made soup. Cause she's gross <laughs> but we love her and then over here is happy's cage so she's a green cheek conyer so she's tiny so she likes these like little toys and she likes conyers love making noise so she loves toys that make sound so there's a lot of bells and stuff in her toys and this is for our myers parrot lemon and uh as you can see over here he gets a lot of footsie toys and there's a little poopy um, yeah, because he just loves playing with his feet and I think that's something that's common to uh, Porcephalus parrots and he has dropped a whole bunch of his footsie toys down there as well and Happy gets some footsie toys too. She doesn't love it as much as Lemon but she still likes to go there sometimes but again her favorite toys are the Bells and Bella of course gets these huge chewing toys which she loves to destroy you know because Bella she loves to destroy but she also gets her little lizard tree and her footsie toys as well because she likes, um, again, biting through and destroying them. <laughs> so yeah, right now I'm just going to take the spouts and then clean them at the sink and then put it back and make sure their pellets are emptied and then change into fresh ones. 
and then make sure that the puppy pads are in their cages and we're ready to start the day. And one thing that's really important to check and to have at your home when you have birds is basically temperature and humidity control. And you can see that it is really warm right now. It is 28 degrees, um, which is fine for the birds, but the humidity is the important part and it is 44%, which is a little higher than we'd like it to be. So we're probably gonna crank it up a little. Um, you ideally want it to be around 40%, uh, especially because we have two African birds, a Myers paired and an African gray, and they don't tolerate high humidity very well, and it um, puts them at a risk of getting aspergillosis, which is what you don't want. But of course, um, our uh, green chiconier here, which comes from more tropical weathers, uh, loves humidity. So we try to keep it at a happy medium, which is around 40%. And the temperature, 28 degrees, is fine for the birds, as long as you make sure that they have access to nice cool water and a water bath if they need it. Um, but you don't want it to be really, really cold. Uh, you want it to be definitely above 25 degrees for sure, and you want it to be definitely below 30 degrees, or at least that's what our vet has told us. And from observing our birds, that's just uh, the temperature range that keeps them happy. So we have um, over here a heater in case it falls below the temperature. And we also have an air conditioner in the other room. We never put it in the same room because then the breeze could be really harmful for the birds. That will keep it below uh, the 30 degrees that we want. And in the other corner of the room, we also have a humidifier. And this is the other area. You can see that we have a humidifier right here next to their little toy. And then, no, this is a dehumidifier, sorry. And then we have also the humidifier right here, which is turned off right now. And we're probably just gonna clean it and put it away because it's been so humid lately. Um, and they just kinda are set to automatic to work when they have to. And like I said, right now, the dehumidifier is the one that's doing the bulk of the job. So Happy has clearly finished her meal and she's not even interested in playing there anymore. So what we're gonna do now is I'm actually gonna feed her coconut oil. Uh, that is, well, we feed coconut oil pretty much five days a week, and then we feed red palm oil with a little bit of um, peanut butter twice a week, and that is because they hate red palm oil, although that's supposed to be the better one for them. So we just add a little bit of peanut butter to make it more palatable for them. So today is coconut oil day, and before she what falls asleep. I, do is I have a little bit of uh, coconut oil on my finger. And I'm just gonna feed her like this, and then she just licks it off my finger. Good girl. And it's so funny because like the face that she makes, it's kind of like the face a baby would make when they're being hand fed. <laughs> so I, I find that actually very endearing. And that's it. And I do this with the other three birds as they're finishing eating chop, and then I just put them back on their cage for some playtime. And one thing I forgot to film is actually the weighing, so I'm actually going to do that right now. Okay. Good girl. Let's see how this goes. So, yep, they don't like it. So, <laughs> so Happy's uh, afraid of the new gorilla pod stand, so she's not being very cooperative right now. But Lemon's just on my other hand waiting for his turn, so I'm gonna try to gently put her down and she's like, there, good girl, good girl, 64.2 grams, perfect. So now for the rest of the, um, well, pretty much until we're home, because they're out whenever um, we're home and we can supervise them, they're just gonna have out time, which is where we just keep the cages open. And then they just kind of go in and out on their own playing and they can go wherever they want but most of the time they will choose to stay by their cage area and one thing that i do find very useful is kind of have a division of space so we have um, like a dining table which i'm not going to show you right now because it's very messy in front of their cage and we have this cart over here on the other side also in front of Bella's area and that kind of gives them a division of space so they know that that is sort of the boundary that they're supposed to stay in. And this is especially important because we have two cats and they have never done anything to them, but you never know with animals or behavior can be very unpredictable. So this is just kind of how we like to keep our birds safe while allowing them to roam around and exercise and have fun. So I actually don't know why, but every time they finish eating chop and then they finish getting their oils, you can see how shiny and beautiful Bella's beak is. Um, they always eat their pellets, so. 
Bella gets a foraging toy. Um, she's not the best eater, but then we found that when we use these foraging toys, she has three different types, but this is the one we're on right now. We rotate them regularly. Um, she's more inclined to eat, which is always a good thing because she's a little underweight right now. We're really trying to get her weight to bounce back up. Right, Bella? Oh, you beautiful thing. And Happy, she's a super good eater. And we actually got her from a pet store, so she also was a little underweight when we got her. But she, her weight's bounced back, so she's now a very healthy weight, and we're just trying to maintain it. And she eats from a regular pellet um, bowl. And Lemon's still a baby, so he tends to poop on his food. So what we do to prevent that is we put the pellets kind of high up on his cage, in the highest, right by the highest perch, and then he'll eat from there. And because he's a baby, he needs a lot more perches, as you can see, because he's not so good at moving around the cage very um, nimbly. And because he's a Myers Paris and they love to chew, you can see, again, that most of his toys are wooden toys. And then he has a lot of ladders and things going through so he can just move in and out of his cage fluidly. Over here. And here's a clip of him playing with his footsie toy. I wonder if Happy's going to do the same. Nope. But you can see how much he loves these and just loves playing with them and chewing them. And he's actually very creative with the way he plays with his toys. I'm gonna see if I can get it today. And there's Pella. She's still eating her pellets, which actually makes me really happy. Because again, we're just trying to get her weight back up. So the idea basically is to introduce them to a lot of different toys and introduce new ones each time so that they don't get afraid of new things, especially African greys. They tend to be phobic birds, so it's kind of good to introduce them. Hi honey, look at this. Would you like to take a bite? Would you like to take a bite? Good girl, wow, see that's fun. Look at that. No? <laughs> and that's how she tells us no, she's had enough. Happy. This is too big for her, so I'm not going to give her this one. What is small enough for my happy? Oh, you got all the big ones. Happy. You want to show them how strong you are? <gasps> Look at that! Wow! Hey, you guys. He is in love with his sisters and he just wants to be on the same perch as them, he wants to be with them. The problem is Bella finds him annoying and Happy just, yeah, <laughs> Happy's happy. So sometimes she likes him and sometimes she'll bite him. So we just have to watch him very closely when they're playing together. But it's good for them to play together. Happy, here you go. Wow, strong bird. Lemon, do you think you can do the same? Do you think you can lift this? So here's Bella getting her shower. So we just turned the shower on. It's a nice lukewarm temperature. And the shower water covers most of the bath, not all of it. And then Bella just kind of walks in and out of the shower at her leisure. We do not use shower perches because all three of our birds actually hate them. And we don't use any soap unless she soaps herself um, with something that won't come out with just natural water. Just because we want this process to get gentle for her. Well, while she's enjoying her nice shower and some humidity, you can see that there's some water on the camera. I've just set up a station for her to dry off. So I like to towel, towel dry her. It's a very nice experience, a really great bonding. You can see that there's a puppy towel over here because birds do get some water um, in their system while they shower and she's probably going to want to do some watery poopies. So it's good to just uh, have it here because our birds are potty trained so she'll let me know if she has to go. So she can just go here in between um, towel drawings to just go and not uh, soil the place. And I have the birdie blanket right here. It's actually a doggy blanket but we call it the birdie blanket. And of course I have my laptop right here so I have something to do while I'm cuddling her and just letting her dry off. 
and of course the temperature of the room has been raised a few degrees to make sure she is nice and warm and now we're just gonna go cuddle so here we are cuddling right now just gonna focus the camera and inside here is Bella hey beautiful and she likes to stay like this while she dries off and I just make sure she's nice and warm and comfortable so she's not shivering too much and we just stay here for about 20 minutes is just until she dries and then I'm just going to put her back on her cage and what she usually likes to do right after this is eat <laughs> so there she is hey yeah honey who's our wet little chicken? who's our wet little chicken my love? who's your wet chicken? oh my little baby wet chicken yes so we're just having um, dinner right now so Mark actually made us something very delicious and I'm just uh, showing how you can include birds in pretty much everything that you do. Happy didn't get a lot of attention today because Lemon was uh, the bird. Uh, it was Lemon's turn to go to the office with us, and uh, Bella got her bath time. So Happy didn't get a lot of individual attention. So then what I do is I just pop her on my shoulder while we have dinner, and she can you know preen me and she can play with my hair, but not my earring. And like I said, all our birds are potty trained, so if she needs to go potty, she'll just let me know and then I have potty paper right next to me that she can go potty on. So yeah, Baby. go back to your cake so we can get ready for bed. One, two, three, go! And she goes to lemon cake, and that's okay too. Done. So the day's ended and everybody's grooming because, you know, it's time for bed and they want to be pretty for bedtime. <laughs> Over here. There you go. Happy little parrots. And the sleep cages have already been all cleaned. So we just have to change the water and put them in. And right before that, Daddy's just going to go over and clean all their um, pads and then perches and get them ready for tomorrow. And I'll show you why the purchase will need to be cleaned. So we actually do a full wipe down of the cage every single night. Especially for baby parrots, it's important because look at what he did to his perch. That's right, that's doo-doo. So we don't want him to get doo-doo all over his feet. So that's why we clean the perches every night. And even Happy, who's a older bird, and she's a little more mature. But I'm sure I can find a parrot doo-doo somewhere on the wires over there, see? So sorry for the gross image, but that's just the reality of parrot ownership. Which actually, you know, as you saw in the video, everything that we do with them is really fun. Look, look what this girl's doing right now. There's really nothing that's not fun, because even as we clean their cages, you know, they're just kind of around having fun. And the product that we use is vinegar that you're going to see right over there. And we sometimes when we have to do deep cleaning, which is pretty frequently for us because we just like to keep everything very clean. We already see some tissues here because Daddy already started to clean. Is that thing, that um, healthy habitat, which is supposed to be non-abrasive. They say you can use it while the parrots are still in the cage. We do not do that. And our parrots are out all the time anyway. So, so yeah, so the day is almost at an end. And... For and the pain. It's uh, 9 o'clock and to wind the birds down, Helena's singing them a song. So it's time for bed, so daddy's gonna put them to bed, one by one. Bella, the delinquent. You can see that the cages are still dirty. We're just gonna clean them right after they go to sleep. They're just being put into their sleep cages. And there's no food in there, but there's just water. Because we don't want them to be distracted from sleeping by food. So we always make sure that they have plenty of uh, food to eat right before they go to bed. And so they're very used to the schedule. We don't believe in keeping the parrots in a very strict routine. 
because we believe in the long run it's it's not good for them to have a very very strict routine because you know life happens and sometimes you're not able to keep them it's very stressful for the birds but we kind of keep them on a steady series of events so they know that when daddy starts getting water for their sleep cages then probably it's bedtime soon so then they start to eat their pellet which is a very good thing so now daddy's just gonna go and get the towels so they can be covered for sleep thing called time for bed and time for bed is useful for many reasons uh, but the reason that's important for us is we go on trips pretty frequently we have wonderful pet sitters but um, we still like to skype them and we still like to say time for bed see you tomorrow just so they know that we're returning at some point in the near future and, and we do find that it is very reassuring for them uh, for those of you who haven't tried we really do encourage you to skype your parrots one day because they will talk back to you and it's really really wonderful for them to know that oh you know my mommy and daddy are still there they're coming back at some point so now i'm gonna say Hey birdies, Lemon, Bella, happy, time for bed, see you tomorrow, time for bed, see you tomorrow.